Rahim, and as usual, our second segment of the show. And today, we're going to learn about the state of the Malaysian palm oil industry. And I'd like to welcome to Capital Today, Tan Sri Dato Dr. Yusuf Basiron, who is the CEO of the Malaysian Palm Oil Council. Tan Sri, welcome to the show and thank you very much for being with us. Now, first question, Tan Sri, tell us about the current state of the Malaysian palm oil industry. The uh, palm oil industry is uh, booming uh, in the sense that uh, palm oil is a very popular uh, edible oil consumed all over the world and producers are trying their best to produce this oil to meet consumers' uh, expectations both in terms of quantity, quality, environmental attributes and therefore we are entering in a very exciting time uh, also with this uh, industry projecting to uh, have uh, a recovery in the prices of palm oil and all this means that uh, uh, people are looking forward to how the palm oil industry can contribute uh, more to their income, to their prosperity and to fulfilling the needs of the world That's right. for uh, edible oil and food security. Now, the Malaysian palm oil, the palm oil business in Malaysia is doing very well. It's seen as a good resource that many people look towards and a resource that we, at many countries, are looking to we Malaysians as a <coughs> benchmark and yardstick. In terms of success, success stories, key learnings, things that we're doing well, what are we doing well at the moment in this industry? Well, we have been able to produce this oil efficiently, sustainably, <coughs> and uh, profitably, which is most important. And uh, the technology that has been developed uh, has been through uh, many years of painstaking research that uh, we have conducted. And therefore, that adds to the success of this industry because we are doing things in the right way uh, with the supporting technology to back up our act efforts and uh, on top of that we have a very well organized industry. Right. Uh, we have uh, research centers like the MPOB, uh, MPOC doing the market promotion work. The ministry works very well with the industry uh, hand in hand in terms of uh, giving maximum cooperation and efforts you know, to promote the well-being of this industry going forward. So I think uh, you see very few industries that are so well organized in that, in that sense uh, to make uh, uh, an impact in terms of uh, competitiveness uh, entering the world market. Now let's talk about that word promotion, Tanshri, because you yeah. stressed that word promote and promotion in your latest answer. Now, many people think when they think about palm oil or palm oil in Malaysia, it is seen as a product to drive the economy, to drive business. But from the consumer angle, not many people yeah. think benefits for the health, benefit for the consumer. Can you tell us a little bit about benefits of health for the consumer from palm oil? Palm oil is a very uh, functional oil, middle of the road oil uh, for the mass consumption uh, because it is produced in such huge quantities dominating the world supply and, and therefore consumption. So people are worried uh, sometimes uh, because of uh, uh, bad publicity or uh, insufficient information getting through, so they uh, question uh, how healthy is palm oil That's as, thing, a, yeah. as, a, as a dietary oil. Mm -hmm. So the way to answer this was for the Malaysian palm oil industry to conduct nutritional research all over the world in the major consuming countries. And the end results of all these uh, research efforts was an uh, 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 endorsement by the US Food and Drug uh, Authority, FDA, uh, which accepts that uh, or at least agreed that <coughs> palm, uh, palm oil uh, blended with the local oils 50-50 mm -hmm. helps to improve cholesterol ratio 
Oh, so yes. that... Uh, Which is a problem here in Asia, cholesterol, yes? With cholesterol habits was, and whatnot, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, originally associated with uh, tropical oil, could, help, uh, could increase cholesterol, that could be bad. But with this research, once and for all, this uh, problem is, is resolved. Now we are selling this oil, carrying the label uh, patented blend to help in improve your cholesterol ratio, meaning your good over your bad cholesterol will be improved as you consume the blend of palm and soya bean or rapeseed oil in the US or elsewhere. Right. So this is a patented study endorsed by the US authority and therefore, uh, who is there to refute that palm oil is, you know, not as what it says? It yeah. helps to improve your cholesterol well, it seems ratio. Seems to be bona fide. <laughs> so yeah, it seems. So all the health. other so-called uh, side issues or allegations would uh, fall out of place already because okay. this is the <coughs> definitive research that says that palm oil is nutritionally yeah. very good. Well, speaking of which, Malaysia and Indonesia are seen as the benchmark, the yardstick for palm oil in terms of business and like you said, business efficiency and God bless in Malaysia, it is a very, <coughs> sorry, uh, well-run business. Got a bit of a sore throat here, I don't know why. Yeah. Must be talking about all this talk about palm oil and business, yeah. but in terms of the Western countries, are they l trying to copy what we're trying to do or emulate what we're trying to do in terms of a business practice and business resource? In fact, uh, they are trying to produce oils <coughs> because the world is so much in need of oil. Very much so, yeah. But the oil they produce is so land intensive, meaning <coughs> they need a lot of land area to produce a quantity of their oil, soft right. oil, soya or rapeseed. So they keep on opening up more and more land for cultivating soya. And even with all those efforts, they are not able to produce as much as they hope to produce. The world would have to depend on land efficient oil like palm because palm will produce 10 times more oil per hectare per year compared to soya. And therefore, it is the palm that is uh, really the dominant oil in the world market. And unfortunately, the Western countries cannot plant all palm. No, they can't. No, they can't. <laughs> this is a tropical crop. Yeah. And uh, only selected countries, because of having good rainfall pattern and the weather patterns and whatnot, yeah, yeah, throughout the year, that can plant all palm. And but that I'm happens sure, to be Malaysia and Indonesia. But I'm sure some countries, some of the more, well, Western developed countries who have been around longer in terms of business, I'm sure they're looking at this resource to trying to, okay they may not have that resource in their country yeah. but they can control it from their country yeah. for example i mean well, is that a may, i mean have we seen this in many other businesses is that a way forward for them this is the best option for them depending on other resources or oil sources would not be tenable would not be sustainable the only main one that is uh, likely to be uh, fulfilling their needs for more and more oil to feed the 10 billion people coming into the world in the next 20 years is to actually depend on palm oil right. because this is the most land efficient oil uh, you know, that can produce and deliver the quantity required. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at uh, big populous countries like China, uh, India, Russia, Pakistan, Egypt, they all buy a lot of uh, palm oil in terms of uh, even percentage wise mm -hmm. palm oil is dominant and if you look at the developed countries japan eu uh, us they also buy a lot of palm they oil do them, in fact do. this is their largest import uh, mm -hmm. item for oils and fats right so what is there to show it is just that palm oil is the most practical desired oil to do business with on and uh, and people therefore uh, focus more and more on how to get this oil uh, delivered to them as efficiently as possible, uh, competitive, uh, environmentally friendly and all that would be put in right. as uh, a way to ensure sustainability, ensure uh, 
efficient uh, processing and production so that uh, the world will be looking for competitive source and we are there to produce a competitive oil that can meet the world standards and demand. Now speaking about competition in, in terms of international markets and whatnot, Tan Sri, on the domestic front, how reliant are we, we Malaysians, yeah. on the palm oil industry for monetization and revenue streams? Now, certain industries do really help the government in terms of funds and revenue, oil and gas industry, for example, but yeah. roughly speaking, just ballpark figure percentage, aga aga as we say in Malaysia, yeah, yeah, yeah. roughly how many percent are we reliant on the palm oil industry for our economy? Well, we, are, we are a big, uh, great exporting country. Mm -hmm. We export a lot of com uh, products and commodities. Palm oil contributes 10% of 10 export revenue. For export the revenue, okay. So if we have 10 other industries like us, we make up 100%, right? right. So, <laughs> so that's how important simple, palm oil is. Simple numbers there, yes. Yeah, that's how important we are as a palm oil industry. Mm -hmm. And that would uh, contribute to multiplier effects, uh, as they say, that uh, this 10% worth of uh, export revenue would be providing a lot of uh, jobs and, and salaries to people right. in the supply chain, in the processing of this oil coming up uh, before being exported, and all the businesses around you know, making it happen. In other words, the uh, production processes. All this will add to the uh, economic uh, you know, uh, dynamic yeah. and impact of, of, the, of the country. That's so fantastic. We are very much uh, reliant on palm oil as a major as segment a major of, our, our uh, of our in the economy. Yeah. That's right. Well, long may it continue because we've had some great stories come out of the palm oil industry. Now, with every success story, with every great story or stories that come out of the industry, or any industry for that yeah, matter, yeah. there are definitely that word, C word, as I like to say, challenges. Now, can you tell us about some of the challenges that the Malaysian palm oil industry is facing, not just on the internal mm. front, but on the external front as well? Well, we have many challenges. Uh, we continue to grow in terms of production, and we have to uh, meet the challenge of how to market this oil, find a home for every ton of palm oil that we produce. That means a lot of market development work promoting the oil so that consumers will continue to accept this oil or demand this oil as a preferred source rather than other uh, competing oils. So these challenges can uh, be in different form. We need to you know, uh, handle allegations uh, put up by competing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oils, especially uh, those that cannot compete, they would uh, probably employ NGOs to spread a negative uh, campaigns against or lobby a certain lobby regulation, yeah. regulations, things mm -hmm. like that. So our machinery has been in place such that we are able to uh, overcome all these challenges. So that as we uh, seen in the past, the more we produce, the more the demand, the higher the price. Uh, of palm oil. So this is not quite common in commodities. Normally when we produce more and more, the price will collapse or, or become weaker. Mm -hmm. But in palm oil, the price has always been up and up. And so this is, a a this is signifying success mm -hmm. that uh, we are working hard to find more and more markets so that the price does not come yeah, down. Yeah. And well, so we benefit both, mm -hmm. both well, in volume and price. Well, speaking about prices, do you face any anti-competition issues or competitive issues in the industry itself, especially here in Malaysia? Because like you said, you know, yeah. it is, it is a, you know, your price will affect that. that well, we, we have been uh, in the business for many years. We have very strong uh, infrastructure for establishing price like the Bursa, uh, Malaysian, uh, Bursa Malaysia uh, system of uh, futures trading for palm oil. This will help establish the futures price, uh, which will relate to physical price of what we uh, export uh, from day to day in mm -hmm. terms of uh, palm oil pricing. So uh, normally nobody can corner the market. You right. know, the market is fairly efficient. Right. So from that standpoint, we do not see problems of anti-competition uh, 
uh, initiative and so on that you know we have to worry about. But uh, people will always try to of course, you of know, course. I mean, maneuver to their advantage. I mean, they will always try to find a loophole within yeah, the system yeah, to yeah. get some personal, yes. financial, individual benefit for themselves or for their company. I mean, yeah, that is yeah. what business is all about. So yeah. you're saying basically that, okay, that we don't, you don't face too many issues on that side of things because the regulation is in place. Yes. Okay, and who does the regulation of the industry? Well, we have many, many regulations. Okay. Uh, I mean, well, which which is the main body that is the sort of body that it? is uh, supervising and enforcing regulations for the industry would be MPOB, okay. Malaysian Palm Oil Board. Okay, they are uh, established to help uh, manage the licensing and uh, the agreements, registrations of activities taken up by the industry from day to day. Like, you, if you trade today, you have to report to MPOB how much you trade, what is the price. Okay. And so in this very way, well board, very transparent. That's yeah. right. <coughs> uh, very well managed system of uh, um, uh, improving transparency as well, mm -hmm. so that we know the price of palm oil at the end of the day, every day, mm -hmm. so uh, that we trade. So this is a very efficient uh, market, efficient uh, infrastructure to have uh, the industry, if you like, uh, progress uh, well into the future. Well, always great to hear about industries following their regulations and not trying to go around it and yeah. very much it's run at its utmost efficiency. But now, Tanshree, back to more business factors in the industry. Can you share with us a little bit more light about Wilma's decision to stop buying palm oil from Sarawak from 2015? What's that all about? What are the main issues there, challenges and the resolution moving forward with this matter. Can you share with us some light on that matter? Yeah, this uh, industry has adopted uh, some sustainability scheme like the RSPO, Roundtable on mm -hmm. Sustainable Palm Oil. And on top of that, there are uh, overzealous uh, so-called NGOs who would pressure the buyers in Europe to even uh, in introduce higher uh, voluntary standards, or I say voluntary standards uh, regarding to sustainability, no deforestation, no planting on peat. So these are probably additional standards imposed, uh, which to them may, may, may be very meaningful, but it may not be all that practical and meaningful to developing countries who need to develop. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. That's so. Right. Uh, Wilma came into uh, this uh, uh, situation because mm. uh, the NGOs like <coughs> TNT and Greenpeace tried to pressure, pressure Unilever, the buyer, okay. to uh, promote the signing of this manifesto right. uh, containing all those uh, newly uh, developed standards, voluntary standards over and above what has already been accepted by RSPO. So, uh, obviously, without uh, prior, much prior discussions, mm -hmm. uh, this standard may not be so easy to implement or very practical to implement and can even jeopardize uh, existing so-called players' uh, market access. And so, reading in detail the manifesto that has been signed, by uh, Wilma, uh, this attracted the concerns of the, the companies. Uh, companies in Sarawak, for example, right. because they plant a lot of their oil palm on peat mm -hmm. because that is their land asset. Right. A lot of their low land is peat and mm -hmm. they can only plant in peat, they cannot plant oil palm on the hilltops. Right. So, um, and uh, in Europe, peat has been planted, you know, 10% of uh, mm. world peat area is an, on agriculture. Right. Sorry to interrupt you, Tashi, but so for Wilma's case, is that a done deal? They will stop 20 from 2015 because of the pressures that they're, they're getting from the NGOs? Well, the is it a done no deal? Nothing is permanent in this world. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I mean, from the media you statements know, and what yeah. they're coming out, look, 2015, yeah. done deal, we are stopping, you know? Yeah. I mean, so, in your opinion, so, is that the end so of it? So, it's voluntary. If they mm -hmm. choose to implement something on their own, mm -hmm. then they just have to uh, find other sources of supply mm -hmm. to meet their consumers' expectations. Right. But for the producers, 
They too, uh, they don't all sell to Wilma. No, uh, Wilma is not the only market in the world. No, it's not. So, uh, if they make a, a stipulation that they don't want to buy, uh, that is like you and I, you know, mm. uh, freedom of uh, of the market. Yeah, freedom you don't want to buy. Yeah, freedom of choice as well. <laughs> but, I mean, that being said, you know, Wilma is a huge customer of this rural market and they've been there for yeah, a long but, time. But many huge customers, uh, they can you know reduce their business if they make mistakes okay, okay. if they want to be to play a different game you know uh, banks have gone <laughs> you yeah. see because well. they they made uh, the wrong you know mm -hmm. uh going against uh, the the tide uh, what i'm saying is any deal or any arrangements uh, scheme must be fair right. if you are not fair uh to the to both sides producers and and consumers then uh, you can't survive. True. We we'll just have to take a very short break there, Tansri, because a very interesting issue on the state of the Malaysian palm oil industry, its success stories and its challenges. And don't forget, that's what business is all about. We're just going to take a very short commercial break right here on Capital Today. But when we come back, more news and headlines, making the news and business news and headlines this morning. And then later on, when we come back, we're going to continue this very interesting topic with Tansri about the Malaysian palm oil industry. Don't go away. Stick with us right here on Capital Today.